everybody, Caleb here, and today I've got something a little different. <laughs> this is a homemade guitar that I've been asked to work on. Um, there's nothing structurally wrong with this guitar. It's actually built very well. Um, what it needs is the setup work. The strings are very high, and I don't know if you can tell this from there, but they're not exactly centered very well. So really, I think we're going to need to maybe replace the nut. It's cut very shallow as it is. There's not much slot there left, so I can't really move them. And we're going to need to lower the saddle. I think as of right now, that's it. We'll see as I tear into this a little bit more, but I'm going to go ahead and set her down and we can get started loosening this up. So I'm going to start off working on the nut. You can see I've got some more uh, blanks sitting here. Um, the strings are crazy high, but I didn't bother getting a measurement off of them first because we're going to go ahead and replace this nut first. I don't know how well you can see it, but the saddle is very tall. I mean, it's very tall. We've got plenty of saddle to take off. I know this is not going to be an issue uh, getting this down playing good, so I'm choosing to kind of ignore it for now and work on the real problem, which is the nut. So I've already got these strings loosened. We'll go ahead and start really tearing this thing apart by getting the strings off of here. So I'm hoping you can actually see it pretty well here. Um, this bass string is set very well. The treble string has way too much room on this side. Um, you know, you can just get these strings further apart for how wide this uh, neck is. So it needs to really be down here or further. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take this nut out. These slots are uh, very shallow, very shallow. And this is also basically as low as this nut's going to go. So it's going to basically need a new nut. Um, hopefully that won't take me too long. I can use measurements based off of this old one to get a new one made. I don't think that's going to be too big of a deal. Obviously nuts take a little bit of time, but they're not super complicated, so it shouldn't be too terrible. So now that I've got the strings off of here, I'm hoping that this nut is going to be fairly loose. Not super glued in there or anything. And every once in a while you get lucky and it uh, is right how you want it to be. So, um, this doesn't really feel like bone. It's kind of light. Um, I don't really want to say plastic, but it doesn't feel like bone. And what I'm going to replace it with definitely will be. So, I'll go through some of my blanks here and try to find one that fits fairly well. Not too oversized, but still big enough and it's going to fill the hole. Uh, once I've picked one, I can start working on shaping it a little closer to this. Obviously, I'm going to want to leave it a little taller than this, so I have some room to uh, actually have some slots. I think there's just, there's not, virtually not any slot on here. So I was messing with this earlier and had the G-string actually pop out. Um, so hopefully we can actually put some slot that will actually hold the strings and be spaced maybe a little bit better. So I'll go through, pick a nut, and start working on shaping it. So I took some measurements off of this saddle. Uh, you can see I have them written down here. This probably won't be any help to you because A, this is a uh, hand-built guitar, and B, they're hardly ever the same even when you get to uh, the same model from year to year. So these are measurements for this saddle and this saddle exclusively and I've gone ahead and made this blank fit very close to that. It still needs some shaping. Um, a lot of it I'm going to try to do once it's kind of in the slot um, but it's a start and it fits in there fairly well. It's just going to take so you can see it, it's it's snug. I gotta push it in there. 
Um, I need to do just a little bit more shaping and I'm going to maybe dot a glue in there. I'm not real sure. Yeah, I think I will just to make sure it doesn't move while I uh, work on getting that final bit done. I want to put a, a slight angle on this down in this direction before I stick it in there for the last time. So I'll do that and then we'll come back and I will just put a, a tiny dot of glue sticking that in there. So I'm going to go ahead and just put a dot of glue on this nut. I actually put more on there than I wanted, so I'll just take some off with my finger. And I'll put that right in there. Press it down. Make sure it's aligned well. Good. And I just used a little tiny dot of this super fatic glue. This is really good for miscellaneous purposes. It dries pretty quick. It doesn't need much. All right, I'm going to let that set for just a second, make sure it's totally dry, and then I'll take my file and start working a uh, reasonable shape into this. I could have probably done more shaping while it was off of the guitar. But now that it's on the guitar, I know, you know, exactly where it needs to be and exactly how it needs to be shaped. So we'll let that set up and then I'll take to shaping it a little bit more. So I'm just about done with the uh, filing portion of this. Um, at least for now, I want to start working on string spacing. And basically what I'm going to do is lay out these outside two strings and mark them and then I'll have you know a kind of roundabout where they should be so I think that looks pretty good coming off the nut maybe just a hair more the outside so I'll mark that with pencil on the nut I'll take the outside one and mark it from the outside as well. Now this is the one that had the real problem before. because There was just too much space. That's looking pretty good. So now what I can do is use these two outside marks and a little bit of math to find out my spacings between the rest of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take care of that off camera. And I'll show you what I come up with. I may do some minor adjustments for, you know, the difference in gauges. But the math thing will get me started, you know, and even spacing for all five of them. So I'll go ahead and take care of that off camera and I'll bring you back once I'm actually moving on with some progress. So I've got these marked up here and it's already looking a lot better. Uh, the spacing is just looking a lot more like it should. Um, you can probably tell I only have them marked on the end where it's leaving the nut because that's really the only spot where it matters for where it is. Um, on this side of the nut, you really don't need it to go straight through. You kind of want to point at the tuner you're coming to. So I'm going to try and do that. What I find also helps is I usually stick my fingernail on here. It's kind of hard to see this way, so I'll just kind of show it this way. Uh, slide that so where it lines up and my fingernail is against the nut. That way I can kind of hold my file against my fingernail left to right and it won't travel any. That'll get, help get you started. Once you get started, there's obviously a groove there for that file to sit in. And wonderful, wonderful noises to be heard by all. That's really just a 
testament to how hard this bone is that the file wants to squeak off of it instead of cut. Now this nut is taller than the old one was so that I could put a little bit more groove in it. It really didn't have enough uh, height on the top to keep the strings in but I don't want to take this groove too deep right off the bat because I'm not totally sure where it needs to be. So I'm just getting it started. Then I'll go ahead and do the next one. We'll go through and do these pretty quick for this first, uh, first run through. So I've got these slots started now. Um, now it comes into that little bit of a balancing act where because this is so tall, if I took this all the way down to where it should be and then come to try to fix this, uh, this is gonna, this side is gonna move so much more, this is gonna be way too low. So I need some adjustment on the saddle side of the 12th fret, which is here. I'm not used to these inlays, so I might have pointed at the wrong fret there, but the 12th fret is here. And it's it's crazy tall. I need to start adjusting on the saddle side of it. So the saddle itself is sitting very, very tall. So I've measured this. I'm at well over 140 thousandths of an inch um, all the way across there. So I'm going to go ahead and start off by dropping at 40 thousandths. That'll put us in the 100 range, which is high, but not crazy high. Um, that'll get us a little bit closer, and then I'm going to come back and basically just measure again. Um, so basically, I've got these strings up to tension now. And I took my tool, and I've measured this out. We're sitting well over 140 thousandths probably closer to 150 thousandths. But I'm gonna, you know, take 80 thousandths off of the saddle, which will drop this 40 thousandths. Um, I'm doing this in steps to make sure I don't take off too much, but that's where we're gonna start with here. And this thing is sitting very tall um, for a saddle out of the bridge. So I'm not too worried about doing that, you know, taking almost 100 thousandths off. That's not absurd for this saddle. Um, so I'll go ahead and get to doing that. I'll show you a little bit of marking that up once I've got this taken back apart. Uh, this is the part where there's a lot of tightening the strings, loosening the strings, tightening the strings, loosening the strings, tightening the strings, loosening the strings, because you got to set it back up, get it up to tension to check everything on it, and then take it all apart to adjust anything. So uh, I won't bother filming all of the detuning. I'll bring you back once I'm ready to mark up the saddle a little bit. So you can see here, I've got this saddle up, and this was already marked for me uh, toward peg head. So that uh, makes it a little easier for me, I suppose. I went ahead and marked up both sides with some Sharpie here. Uh, it will become very evident why here in a second. So I'm going to start off by taking 80 thousandths of an inch off of this saddle. So what I'll do is I'll get my calipers out. I'll open those up to 80 thousandths. Lock that down. And now what I'll do is I'll just, basically I'll hook the top, hook one edge on the bottom of the saddle, and scratch a line into that Sharpie. You can see it there. That's where I'll take off to. I'll do the same thing on the other side. And so now I'll just basically go to the disc sander and knock it down to that point and I will have taken it down 40 thousandths, half of what I've taken off at the 12th fret. So I ended up taking a little bit more off of that saddle than I initially intended. Not a whole lot uh, and obviously nothing to worry about. but. It's probably a little bit lower than I was initially uh, 
marked on there. We're sitting about a hundred thousandths on that base E string, which is good. That's that's really close. This treble side was actually higher to start off with, and it's still higher, almost a hundred and twenty thousandths still, um, fairly high. Um, I think it's probably still best to take a little bit more off of that saddle. I know I'm really going back and forth on this one. Uh, because I'm going to be taking off way less than that on this side, I'm going to take off some more on the saddle. Um, we're at roughly a hundred thousandths on the big E and a hundred and twenty thousandths on the little E. I'm going to take them down to 95 each. So I got to drop five thousandths on this. So that's ten thousandths off of the saddle. I got to drop twenty five thousandths. That's fifty thousandths off the saddle. I got to drop a lot more on the treble side. The bass side really isn't far off, but that treble side needs to be a lot closer so that I get a really better idea where this is going to be. Um, the reason I'm taking so much off of the saddle now is because that will actually adjust where the, uh, you know, where the string height is off of that first fret, which is what I'm, you know, fixing with my nut slots, is that string height off that first fret. So, you know, as I drop this end down, that will bring it closer, and I need it to be about about right. It doesn't have to be perfect yet, but it needs to be about right. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that. I know I'm just basically going to do exactly what I just showed you. I probably won't show it this time. I'll take care of it, we'll come back, and we'll start working on this nut. So now that we've got the action at the 12th fret sitting a whole lot closer to where it's going to be uh, permanently, I'm going to start looking at the action off of the first fret, which will be adjusted at the nut. So I've got out my uh, 17 thousandths pick, and this is what I basically use as a gauge to uh, set the string height here. Um, if I can put shit in there and have no resistance, and right now I've actually got space in between the uh, pick and the between the pick and the string, um, I know it's too high. I want to get this almost holding that uh, pick in. On the bass side, I want to get it basically like I'll slide it in and it'll almost hold it. On the treble side, it may want to be a little bit tighter. As you get those strings uh, to a smaller gauge, they don't move near as much. So you can get a little bit tighter. Um, but the way I'm doing this is I've got this back up to pitch. And I'll do this one string at a time. So I'll start off on the bass E. Lower it. Take it out of the slot. Take the uh, appropriate sized file. And start working it down. Now, some things to note when you're doing this portion of the job. You want to keep the angle of this slot. See, I've got this uh, angled slightly down. I'm not sitting straight. I kind of want to follow the headstock. Uh, angle. That's typically the best course of action. You also want to make sure you're not running this bottom corner into the headstock. I can see there's some scratches in here and I'm willing to bet that's probably what those are from is from running this file into that headstock. So I don't want to do that. I have to watch for that and I want to try to keep about the same angle as the headstock is. I can see I didn't really have that angle before because I'm not even hitting on the front edge, which is the most important spot. The other thing to keep track of when you're doing this is that you're not moving uh, left or right, or if maybe you need to make an adjustment. Maybe, oh, this string is maybe a little too close to the edge, so you can actually make that adjustment as you're going here. If you try and bias the file, to cut in that direction. I'm doing pretty good in that regard, so I'm not going to uh, 
attempt much there. We're probably getting a lot closer, so to test it now, I'll put that string back in the slot, tune it back up, slide that pick right back in there. You can see we're not getting any buzzing off that pick yet, so we've got some more to go. Now I'm getting kind of deep in there. Um, that slot's getting a little deep. I don't know how well you can see it, but pretty much that whole string has disappeared into the slot, um, which means I'm going to need to take some height off the top of the saddle, but for the time being, it sometimes helps to add a little graphite to the side of my file. Helps it slide through the slot a little easier. This is uh, something I've done before. I'm, you know, I've not seen a whole lot of people do this. I'm not sure if it's a lot of help, but I have found that generally you can just kind of use some pencil lead on either side of the file and it will catch a little bit less on the sides of the slot. The thing to remember with this is just because you've made it easier to cut does not mean you should leave uh, the slot so deep in comparison to the top. Um, you've lubricated your file so it'll go through but your strings will still have a problem catching on those sides. So. This helps me for cutting, but I am still going to have to take those sides down. I'm getting a lot closer. I'm not quite there, I don't think. But, it's really close. You can see if I hit it a little harder, I get a little bit of buzz off of that pick. So we're getting pretty close there. So if you were doing this and maybe you hadn't done this a lot, it may help to put a piece of tape down on the headstock so you don't uh, run into the finish. I know uh, several people have suggested that and you know that's probably a good idea if you don't have a lot of experience doing this. Um, it is very easy to run your tools into that finished surface and be not very happy with yourself. <laughs> because of it. Another thing to remember when you're doing this is the D and the G string are the most likely to get caught in that nut because of the angle that they're leaving. Um, you know, it's this whole, it has to change from going, basically this is exaggerated, but in this direction to this direction and they tend to get caught in that nut pretty bad if you're not a little more forgiving in the angle. Um, you know, I've seen plenty of guitars where the nut slot for the D and the G are cut like straight. They're all cut straight through. And you get binding issues. Um, like the string will actually get stuck in that slot and you'll end up breaking strings a lot right at your nut. Um, so. You really want to have the front edge be exactly where it needs to be and point from there on at the tuner you are uh, aiming for. That really helps get those strings moving a little easier through your nut slot. So now we come to the reason that typically um, I'll say if you don't need a new nut it's not worth replacing. Uh, just roughing these in took me a half hour. Uh, they're still probably not perfect. They're a lot closer. You could probably actually play this now. But, you know, just getting to this point took me a half hour of filing down that those slots. Now that's having slots already started, having them already measured, 
having the nut mostly shaped took me a half hour to get to this point. Now I've really got to loosen all these strings, take them all out, take some off the top to make it the correct height from the top, and maybe come back through here and do some fine adjustments. Um, your nut really does not affect your tone as much as some people would like you to believe. Um, it can affect tuning stability. Probably not as much as uh, some people would like to believe as well. But it can be very timely and expensive to replace it. So, you know, that's why most of the time I'll say if you don't need a nut replacement, I wouldn't do it. It just takes too much time. Um, now, if you have an issue with a nut, like this one, the nut was already so so low and the slots were just not even um yeah i mean if it needs to be done it needs to be done but if it's an elective thing i would typically choose not to so we got that on there um i'm going to pretty much loosen these strings up now and do some taking off the top that's usually easier with the strings maybe pulled out to the side so i can take off the whole top I'll do that with some hand files and that sort of thing. Um, doing pretty good on this thing. This thing really has to be better than it was, considering the fact that the action is down under a hundred thousandths of an inch. We're not far off now, just a little bit, a little bit more set up, and I think we'll be in really, really good shape. So I was really close to being done with this thing, and I noticed um, since I've lowered the action a ton. Um, I had a buzz. Now, I had checked uh, about this much of the frets, and I thought, wow, those are pretty, pretty, pretty good level, with one exception. This one fret is high, and just in this little section here, it only buzzes on that high E string. Um, <laughs> the rest of them, I mean, they are really, like, rock-solid level. Like, not even the littlest bit of rock. But I got up to here. Not so much. So I'm going to have to work that out. I did go ahead and grab my file. Um, now, I have one high fret, but obviously I can't just sit in this one spot. And do this because I will end up with uh, <laughs> these frets being crazy low so I have to kind of feather it out it's getting better but it's still not quite there I can tell I'm hitting like this fret most of the time it is flat now and I did try pressing this in um, it's not like it's just de-seated um, it wouldn't go down anymore. Obviously, I tried that before I started <laughs> filing on it. If uh, you have one fret that's crazy high, you might make sure that it doesn't move before you go trying to remove some off the top. That was something that I had checked before. Starting on this. As per usual, you want to start with the, the easiest fix. Um, and sometimes when I say the easiest, I mean the least destructive fix. If it's loose, you don't need to be taking any material off. You just need to push it in and make it not loose anymore. It's better. Um, I'll go ahead and finish her up here and then move on. So since I filed on these, I've got to go through and polish them up. I've already done a couple of grits. I'm now doing the uh, micro mesh polishing pads. I did also take my uh, end round over file and do a couple of them, um, mostly on the, uh, the treble side where your hand rides for the most part. They were just maybe a little stick too far sticking out. I noticed them as I've been fiddling with this. Um, I did just send the customer an email asking how heavy-handed he likes to play. Um, as I set the, uh, set the string height on this, 
at the uh, bridge side. It may become important as, well, typically more heavy-handed players like their action a little bit higher and, you know, people who play a lot lighter will want it a lot lower. And it's just to fight the buzz. If you play harder, you push harder, you strum harder, you're more likely to get a buzz. So you may want the action a little bit higher up. Um, and then, of course, the opposite is also true. The softer you go, the closer you can get those strings to the fretboard, so it's easier to play. So, you know, that's something to think about if you're setting up your own or someone else's. The action should be set up for the player. There are some general numbers, you know, like um, middle of the road numbers that I have used or I use quite often, but, um, you know, and I know what I like, and I generally like right in the middle of the road, but I know some people prefer either really, really low, because they play really, really light, or I know some people really like it to be right on that high end of a good playable action. So it doesn't hurt to check and set up accordingly. So as I was rubbing some oil on here, the customer just emailed me back and he said that he was a mostly a finger picker and it was fairly light, which is cool. So I can set this action up maybe a hair lower than I would typically and I think he ought to be happy with that. Just putting a little bit of oil on the board to kind of rejuvenate that board, make it look real good. I'll get a clean cloth to wipe off the excess. I think we're in business. So, assuming that fret leveling went well, and I think it did, I should be able to set this up, and we will be just about ready to play it. Well, I think this thing is in way, way, way better playable condition. Um, I've got the action down. It's actually sitting about 70 thousandths of an inch on the treble side and about 80 thousandths on the bass side, which is very low. Um, you know, it's on the low end of where I like to put them, and it's playing really good. It's really got a sound. I was really impressed with the, uh, the sound on this thing, which, you know, is probably to be expected when you, uh, get a hand-built guitar. So I'll play a little bit. I think it sounds really good and it's now actually playable where before I mean you couldn't play it the action was way over 150 thousandths at the 12th fret and now those strings are spaced a little bit better as well um, that saddle is actually sitting about like a saddle should before it was crazy tall and the strings were coming way up high to get over it anyways it's it's set up now really well um, it reminds me of something Jerry Rosa would say Jerry would say that Building an instrument and setting an instrument up are two totally different things. And I don't mean to dog on the customer here, because it's a well-built instrument, but setting it up is a whole nother game. And now this thing has the setup. And, you know, it had the sound and it had the build quality. It now it has the setup. I... It's very enjoyable to play. I'm sure the customer will be glad to get it back. So I hope you enjoyed watching this a uh, little more thorough setup work on this guitar. Um, it's been it's been a quite a bit of work. So thanks for watching, and I will see you later.